Now you should be seeing how this stuff works. The, the idea of going from a fixed to a fluid grid uh, brings a lot of possibilities. And, and wouldn't it be cool if uh, that worked for everything? But it doesn't because as you keep going down with the fluid grid, you get to the point where it's so small that it's dysfunctional. So that's where the responsive grid comes in. Um, it take lifts on this uh, idea that everything in the page is going to adjust to the size of the viewport. But what it does then is it creates breakpoints where you can change the presentation, change the rules, and set it up so that those rules are only um, read in if they apply um, to the thing to the viewport that you're working on so that's what we're going to do in this video is we're going to uh, move forward and create a uh, responsive uh, design uh, from this fluid design so I'm just going to save the CSS and the HTML that I've got so that that stuff is still there for reference but uh, I'll continue on so I'm just going to give it a new name and um, I'm going to call this from fluid to responsive I'll go ahead and change the title while I'm there so that's the HTML and I'm going to um, rename this as well the the style sheet and so I'll need to reconnect uh, to the newly named one okay so I've renamed the CSS and the HTML that means the first thing that I need to do is make sure that I am connected to the right style sheet so now let's get busy with this Okay, so for the, the first thing that I need to do, we've already got our uh, our 12 column grid uh, for the the thing set up. We, we did that in the first round. We've used these formulas, um, the percentages to to create that. So we've got that 12 column grid. That That's fluid. Now we want to make it responsive. So what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to manipulate the 8 column grid. So uh, when we go into our uh, responsive or, or our CSS, right now we've got a default set of rules. These are going to apply if nothing else does. So what we need to do at this point is understand the difference between using minimum width and maximum width in order to create uh, our next phase. So we've got the ability to use either a min width or a maximum width. A minimum width or a maximum width for the rules. And let's take a look at these and understand how this applies. And then we'll look at it from a mobile up um, user-centered approach where uh, you are trying to help the person with the mobile phone to not download any more data than they have to. Okay, so when we're using a minimum width series, we start with the default. Uh, which would be the first thing listed in the document and uh, that is going to apply unless it encounters no other any other rules that overrides it that's going to apply at any width from zero pixels up to infinity um, the next thing that we have in the case that we're using where we're doing the 4 8 12 column off of a 960 grid we've got a minimum width of 320 and what that means is that prior to a screen being 320 pixels wide, it's not going to load this information. Um, but once it hits 320 pixels through infinity, it's going to load that information. And that information is going to override the default. With the minimum width of 640, again, it's not going to kick in until you reach 640 pixels. At that point, it will override the rules that are put in place by either the default or the minimum width. And the same thing with the 960. So um, 
you are going from sort of a zero pixel to infinity to a 320 pixel to infinity to a 640 etc so when you're using minimum width um, you need to put the smallest values in at the top and load and, and then the larger values as you go when I say the top I mean the top of the style sheet so you would code the default first and then you would do the minimum etc now if you're doing maximum widths it's a little bit different because you may have um, well let's just start with the basics if you have a maximum width of 320 anything up to 320 pixels up to and including 320 pixels will load that style information so you start with zero from your very first rule uh, on this one your default has to be in place for those zero to 320 then with the max width what you do is um, when you go to 640 you override everything same thing with 960 and then the default would have to um, be capable of overriding everything so really these two defaults are the same and, and you would load the defaults um, up at the beginning of the style sheet in both cases though so they'd be the first thing that they read uh, but what happens is if I style for a uh, a four column you know a small monitor and it comes in and it says oh I've got a maximum width of 320 uh, if that hits 321 then it's gonna load this but the other thing that's gonna happen is if I've got that 320 pixel device these rules are gonna apply but these are also gonna apply and these are also gonna apply so in order to make it so that this 320 pixel uh, setting is red we're gonna have to mix up the direction that we do these in so that this would actually have to be last in the style sheet that above it and that would be first so uh, let's look at what that means uh, let me go ahead and rotate these to the way that they would appear in the style sheet I'll be right back so if we're doing a minimum width approach then it's gonna read the default uh, then it will read the min width and that will override it uh, of 320 etc so that the only thing that your cell phone or your small format is going to load is the stuff that meets that criteria of it has a minimum width so um, if something has 240 pixels it's not gonna read this whereas in this case if we have something that comes in at 240 pixels let's just say something came in here at 240 pixels what that's gonna have to do is load in everything that intersects that line so that means that at 240 pixels in a minimum width version it would just load the default in a maximum width it would have to do, lo load the default the maximum width of 960 the maximum width of 640 and the maximum width of 320 so in your smallest devices if you're using a maximum width in order to reach the styles that are going to apply only to that 240 pixel wide uh, viewport it's gonna have to load in everything whereas in the minimum width it's not gonna read anything that that uh, applies to a screen width larger than it because uh, those elements don't apply at this point and let, let me explain why that's important um, if you have say um, if you think about the University of Notre Dame site let me bring that up for us so we're at the University of Notre Dame site and there's this huge background image that applies when you're at the the large screens and I don't know what the breakpoints are but when I get to lower breakpoints they either load a smaller image see like that there that's a smaller version of the same image um, and that's a background image so it, it's loaded by the CSS not the HTML separation of content there and then as I go smaller 
then it goes to an even smaller version of the same picture and then there's a fourth breakpoint um, where it doesn't load any background image at all so they are doing a minimum approach in that if I come in with a phone it's not gonna load those large images and that's important because of bandwidth whereas when you have the large screens you normally have uh, more bandwidth to play with whereas if you're on a mobile device you're no normally coming over a cell phone um, system and you're paying more money for the data and it's slower so by using the minimum width approach you only have to load the things that are applicable to yours now you'll load the smaller things as well uh, because they encounter it but for instance if I was at uh, 680 pixels I'd reload the minimum with 640 320 and default but I wouldn't be loading the really big image in there whereas if I'm coming down here I'm not loading any images at all the opposite of that is true with the max width in that um, it reverses that in that this the smaller device it the smaller a device is with the viewport the more it's going to have to load because it has to load all these other things because the maximum width is overriding it. So you want to use the minimum width to reduce the amount of um, overhead that comes to these small browsers.